Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to be learning how to crochet the Making Waves Market Bag, which you can see here in the photo in front of you as well. If you head on over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com, you'll find some more photos of this market bag there. So this is the bag that we're going to be making today. It's the Making Waves bag, and uh, if you're here for the marvelous market bag crochet along, this is week two. So welcome. The bag today uh, is the smaller of all the ones in the crochet along. Uh, it's the one that has the most stability because it's a, a more solid fabric, uh, and uh, has these rows of single crochet stitches interspaced uh, between these wavy rows, which makes it a little bit more um, strong and less stretchy than some of the other bags in this crochet along. It's also the shortest one. Uh, the bag, when it's laid flat, measures approximately 14 inches by 14.5 inches. It's an easy market bag to make. It uh, features uh, basic crochet stitches, and it's worked from the bottom up uh, to the two handles here up at the top. So thank you so much for joining me for this project. You're going to need a copy of the written crochet pattern, which is on my blog. The direct link is there for you in the video. You're also going to need some 100% cotton yarn. I'm using the uh, Pima Cotton by Lion Brand, and I'll be working uh, in the bag in the photos it's shown in two colors uh, in your color A you're going to need about 220 yards of your color A I have used the purple color the rain cloud color you'll need about 186 yards of your color B and I've used this mademoiselle color today uh, I am going to vary it a little bit and you can do that in the pattern as well I'm going to actually make my bottom out of this darker gray pewter color before using the other colors in the body. So again you can mix and match any colors. I'll show you in this video how to add your new color and um, and continue to work with it in the project. You're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook as well as a yarn needle and a pair of scissors for weaving in your ends. So once again thank you for joining me. While you're here don't forget to subscribe, take a look around, and uh, there are several other market bag crochet patterns on here uh, or will be in a couple weeks if you're here for the crochet along and uh, lots of other great patterns and stitch tutorials as well. So let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Our market bag patterns today are worked from the bottom up. So we're going to start down here with our bottom. They are worked in rounds. So we're going to start by making a slip knot. And then you're going to chain four. Now one thing to note in the bottom of the market bag, the chain three at the beginning of each round does count as a double crochet stitch. For round one, you're going to begin by working 11 double crochet stitches into that fourth chain from your hook. So in that very first chain, work 11 double crochets. Your chain three will count as a stitch, so in the total, at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 12 double crochet stitches. This is 9, 10, and 11. So now including your chain 3 there at the beginning, you should have 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Once you have worked your 11 double crochets, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top 
of that starting chain 3. For round 2, you're going to begin by chaining 3, and then working one double crochet stitch into the same chain as joining. So including that chain 3, you'll have 2 stitches coming out of that first stitch. You're then going to work 2 double crochet stitches in each chain all the way around. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 24 stitches. And you can join with a slip stitch at the top of your starting chain 3. At the end of your round two, you're joining with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch, and you're ready to begin round three. For round three, you're going to chain three, and into that next stitch, work two double crochet stitches. So you have your chain three coming out from the same stitch as joining, then into the next stitch, work two double crochets. Double crochet, one double crochet into the next stitch, followed by two double crochets into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work one double crochet into the next stitch, followed by two double crochets into the next. At the end of round three, you're joining in the same stitch, or in the first stitch, your chain three. And at the end of round three, you should have a total of 36 stitches. For round four, you're going to chain three, which counts as a stitch. Double crochet, work one double crochet into the next stitch. And followed by two double crochets into the next. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work one double crochet in each of the next two stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next. Repeat all the way around, join with the slip stitch in the top of your first stitch, and at the end of this round you should have 48 stitches. For round five, you're going to chain three and work one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Next, work two double crochets into the next stitch. Followed by one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into the next stitch, followed by one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Continue all the way around 
at the end of this round you will have a total of 60 stitches and you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. For round six, you're going to chain three, work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. Followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. One double crochet into each of the next four stitches followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. At the end of this round, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and you should have a total of 72 stitches. For round seven, you're going to chain three and work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. You will have noticed by now that we are increasing each round by 12 stitches. So your circle will be growing larger and larger. Next, after you've double crocheted in each of the next four stitches, you're going to work two double crochet stitches into the next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. and two double crochets into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next five stitches followed by two double crochets into the next stitch and at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 84 double crochet stitches. You can then join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. For round eight, you're going to chain three. You're going to double crochet, work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. and then two double crochets into your next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. and two double crochets into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and at the end of this round you will have a total of 96 stitches. For round nine first I need to join with the slip stitch in the top of my first stitch from round eight and then round nine you're going to chain three 
work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches and then two double crochets into your next stitch. Next work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. You're then going to repeat that all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and at the end of this round you will have 108 stitches in total. For round 10, you're going to chain three and work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Next, work two double crochets into the next stitch, followed by one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around, two double crochet stitches into the next stitch, followed by one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. Uh, join with the slip stitch in that first stitch once you come all the way around. At the end of this round you'll have a total of 120 stitches. At the end of round 10, you're, uh, you should have a fairly large circle there in front of you. Uh, it's going to measure, let me see here, approximately 11 inches across. Okay, so at this point we're done our increase rounds. For rounds 11 and 12, you are going to chain one, single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So beginning with that first stitch, single crochet, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come back to the beginning, join with a slip stitch in your first stitch, chain one, and, uh, and work that round 12. At the end of round 12, we are going to switch to our color B, and uh, I will show you how I like to change colors um, at that time. So go ahead, work two rounds of single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch, chain one, single crochet in each stitch and uh, then meet me back here at the end of round 12. At the end of round 12, as mentioned, you're going to want to switch to your uh, color B. So here I've worked to my final stitch in round 12. And because I'm going to want to switch colors, I'm going to do that in this final stitch. To switch colors or to add a, a new ball of yarn in any project, you're going to insert your hook into that final stitch before you want the color change. Yarn over and draw up a loop. 
Uh, as we're working a single crochet, we're going to drop that color A, pick up our color B and place it on our hook, and then pull through. You can then pull your little tails a little bit tighter to make sure that the stitch matches the rest there, and then you're going to join with a slip stitch. For my first round, I will probably work over top of these ends uh, to kind of tuck them in a little bit. You can then, uh, for round 13, you're going to chain one with your color B and you're all set to continue. For round 13, you're going to single crochet into the same stitch as joining and we're going to start making this wave pattern. So single crochet in the same stitch as joining. Next, you're going to half double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. and work a triple or treble stitch into the next stitch. That's the tallest stitch in our wave. Our next stitch is going to be a double crochet stitch, followed by a half double crochet into the next, and single crochet into the next stitch. You're then going to repeat, so beginning with the half double crochet. So you've worked a single crochet, then half double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next, triple crochet into the next stitch. That's the height of our wave. We're going to go down now, double crochet into the next half double crochet into the next and single crochet into the next stitch and then you're going to once again start your repeat. You're going to continue that repeat all the way around. So half double crochet, double crochet, triple stitch, double crochet, half double crochet and single. Continue that all the way around. When you come all the way around on round 13, you're going to want to switch to back to your color B. Uh, so what you're going to do is you have your double crochet, your triple crochet, your double crochet, and then you have a half double crochet in this final stitch. So what you're going to do in order to switch colors is yarn over Insert your hook into that next stitch, yarn over, and draw up a loop. You can now drop your color B, pick up your color A, and place it on your hook, and then pull through all three of those loops. Pull your tails a little bit tighter there, and then join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Now for this market bag pattern, as the color changes are uh, fairly close together uh, as you work up your bag, you have a couple of options. You can either fasten off your color B and weave it in and continue to work that way after each round. Or what I did was I just left, because it's on the inside of the bag, I just left my color B attached and uh, let it hang loose and then I pick it up when I come around because you're going to be switching colors at the end of each round in this pattern. For round 14, working again with your color A, you're going to chain one, single crochet into that first stitch, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to the end of your round 14, you're going to switch back to your color B, join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch. So go ahead and work a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. At the end of round 14, 
you're going to join your new color of yarn your go back to your color B and join with a slip stitch in that first stitch next for round 15 you're going to begin by chaining four and this fo chain four is going to count as a triple stitch next work one double crochet into the next stitch a half double crochet into the next single crochet into the next we're now going to increase our wave stitch working one half double crochet into the next stitch double crochet into the next triple crochet into the next stitch and from here on you're going to repeat decrease your wave double crochet in the next half double crochet into the next stitch and single crochet into the next half double crochet into the next stitch double crochet into the next stitch and triple crochet into the next you're going to continue to repeat that all the way around until you come back to your final stitch and your final stitch will be a double crochet stitch you're going to join back to your uh, change back to your color a in that final stitch and join with a slip stitch into the top of that uh, chain four at the end of round 15 you're finishing with a double crochet and uh, I'll just show you how to join your new color when working the double crochet what you're going to do with your color B is yarn over insert your hook into that final stitch in your round 15 yarn over and draw up a loop you're going to yarn over continuing with your color B and draw through two loops then drop your color B pick up your color A and place it on your hook and draw it through those final two loops and that's how you change your color in your double crochet stitch you're then going to join in the top of the starting chain four with a slip stitch and you're all set to begin round 16 for round 16 you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around just as you did for round 14. when you come all the way back to your first stitch you're going to switch back to your color B in that final stitch and then join with a slip stitch into that first single crochet stitch at the end of your round 16 you're going to join your color B there in the final stitch and then join with a slip stitch into that first stitch now for the rest of the pattern you are going to repeat rounds 13 through to rounds 16 seven more times so that's uh, your first round here starting with a single crochet and then increasing your wave decreasing then a single crochet round and then another round of the wave stitch uh, starting with your chain four and then a round of single crochet so you're going to repeat those four rounds seven more times and then repeat rounds 13 and 14 one more time so you're going to end on a single crochet round in your color a at that point uh, there's no you can fasten off your color B but leave your color A attached because we're going uh, to use it for the top of the bag and the handles so go ahead and repeat rounds 13 through to 16 seven more times and then repeat rounds 13 and 14 one more time after that and then meet me back here in order to uh, work the top of our bag Okay, so once you have finished all of your repeats, so once you have 
uh, repeated rounds 13 through to 16 seven more times, followed by rounds 13 and 14 one more time. This is what your market bag uh, will look like. You're then going to begin the top of your market bag. So for the next four rounds, so four rounds, you're going to chain one and work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around and then join with a slip stitch in the top of the first stitch. So you're going to work the four rounds of single crochet stitches, chaining one at the beginning of each round and then joining with a slip stitch in the first stitch at the end of the round. By the time you are finished, you will have a total including that last repeat of the round 14. You're going to have a total of five rounds of single crochet stitches all worked in your color A. So go ahead and repeat uh, that four rounds of single crochet stitches and uh, then meet me back here and we will begin the bag handles. Once you have finished your next four rounds of single crochet stitches for the top of your bag, you do not need to fasten off, but we're going to jump right into the handles of the bag. What you're going to do for the bag handles, the, they are worked in rows, and you're going to start by making a foundation chain of 50 stitches. So go ahead and chain 50 stitches. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Once you have worked that chain of 50 on the top edge of your market bag starting where you joined you're going to count and skip 29 stitches. So we joined right here so starting in our next stitch we're going to count 29 stitches. There's 15 29. You're then going to skip those 29 stitches and into the next stitch join with a slip stitch. Okay, so that's your first row. You're then going to turn your bag so that you're working in between the two joins on the handle. Turn your bag And you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch on your bag. Now working along that chain that you just worked, you're going to work a single crochet into that first stitch. It's up to you. I like to work on into the back bumps, but it's really up to you. On your foundation chain you're going to single crochet into that first chain and then into each stitch all the way across. Once you are done this row you will have a total of 50 single crochet stitches and you're going to join with a slip stitch on the other side to your market bag. So once you've worked all the way across, you're going to go and join again. Uh, and again, you're joining in between the two joins of your handles. And you're just going to join with a slip stitch into the next stitch. 
You're then going to slip stitch into each of the next two stitches on your market bag. And then turn your work so that you're working once again along that foundation chain or that uh, bag handle chain into the single crochet stitches. You're then going to, for your row three, so you have your foundation chain, your row single crochets, into your next row, you're going to work a row of double crochet stitches all into that bag handle. So double crochet into the next stitch, and then into each stitch along your bag handle. When you come to the other side, you're going to skip the next two stitches on your market bag and join with a slip stitch into the next stitch. And I'll show you what I mean when I come across. So as you come across your market bag handle, you've worked your row of double crochet stitches. Now back again, make sure you're working between the two joins of the handles on your market bag. You're going to skip the next two stitches and then slip stitch into the next stitch. Then for your final row, you're going to want to slip stitch once more into the next stitch and turn your work. We're now going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way across and then join with a slip stitch into the next stitch on our market bag. So work one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. At the end of that single crochet row, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch on your market bag. And at this time, you can fasten off. So your first handle is complete. You can weave in your ends. For your second handle, you're going to go to one of the outer edge of your market bag handles and uh, to get yourself started to find the right place, you're going to uh, count over 29 stitches. So this is where I joined my last handle. Count 29 stitches again. There's 10. Twenty nine. Once you've counted twenty nine stitches into your next stitch, join your yarn again with a slip stitch and then chain one. You're now ready to begin that second handle. To work your second handle, you're going to work it exactly as you did for that first handle. So you're going to go back and uh, repeat those uh, rows, few rows for the handle. You're going to begin by chaining 50, count 29 stitches, and then join on the other side, and then repeat your single crochet and your double crochet row. And that brings you to the end of uh, your Making Waves market bag and uh, you can go ahead and enjoy it. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, once again don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to seeing all your finished products. Uh, you can tag me across social media. Until I see you next time, happy crocheting. Bye!